Welcome to Citizen Survival Plan. My name is John, and today we're going to get into the top four tips for new GMRS users. And at the end, I'm going to talk about one of my favorite tools for range testing and just a really great tool for GMRS in general. First things first, the antenna for your handhelds. There is so many antennas on Amazon and other places that you could pick up that actually do not work with your radio. If you are using GMRS, you need to have a antenna that is rated for the 462 to 467 frequency. I've seen, and I made this mistake when I was new to GMRS, I would just buy any Nagoya antenna that would fit my radio and it would not be in the right frequency. I have tested this and it actually does make a difference. I know it doesn't seem like it would because the antennas are the same, but when you use the ham radio antennas on your GMRS radio and they're not in that band for GMRS, you'll get a lot of cutting in and out um, on a little bit weaker of a signal and when you switch over to the GMRS it really really cleans up that signal so you're not getting so much cutting out. Next in the antenna realm here is your base station antenna and online a lot of people just keep talking about using more and more gain to go further. This doesn't work for everybody and let me explain. I got a high gain antenna and I put it on my BTEC GMRS 50X1. I was using the high gain antenna versus my 5 watt handhelds and my base station with 50 watts really wouldn't go any further than my handhelds and it didn't make any sense to me. So after doing some reading on the internet I switched that over to a low gain antenna and actually quadrupled, maybe even 5 x my range. Because of the area that I live in, I have a lot of hills and a lot of trees and there's some buildings in my town. And switching to the low gain antenna for the rocky, hilly environment actually increased my range drastically. So when you see that online that everyone's trying to push the higher and higher gain antennas, it doesn't work for everybody. If you are living in a big, large, flat, plain area like the desert or just, just anywhere where it's flat and just wide and there's limited trees, you can use a high gain antenna. It would probably be the best antenna for you. But if you're living in the mountains of Appalachia, the low gain antenna is going to go way further, in my opinion. I've done a lot of testing with this. Low gain for rocky, hilly areas and high gain for big, flat, wide open areas. All right, this one I know you've seen before. This is number three. Height is might when it comes to radio antennas. I have done a lot of testing with this as well. And me and a friend talked 10 miles on handhelds and they were five watt handhelds. He was on top of an 800 foot mountain and I was on the ground. We were 10 miles apart and we talked with absolutely crystal clear, perfect signal from a 10 mile distance. This is because we had one radio elevated. And when you do that, there's nothing in the way. The radio signals can go very far when there is no obstructions. This is why you get that 30 mile range on those bubble packs where they say it could go 30 miles. It can go 30 miles with no obstructions. But, but in real world testing, they're really only good for about five miles. So what this kind of means is if you have like even a 50 watt GMRS radio and you take the antenna and just set it on the ground and the area you're in isn't very high, you're not going to go far at all. You might only go a couple blocks or maybe a half a mile. Getting your antenna up high is the number one priority. I will take a 5 watt power output if the antenna is on someone's roof over a 50 watt radio where the antenna is sitting on the ground. Getting your antenna up really high is very important. Now, with that being said, this is where power comes into place. 
when you're in an area like me where there's a lot of hills and a lot of obstructions and a lot of trees and buildings, the more you up that power, the further you can push through the obstructions and go further and further. If you're trying to get maximum range, you need to consider power and even more important, the height of the antenna. This is number four. This is using repeaters to maximize your range. I have a video on how repeaters work and how to connect to them. We'll put it here. But this is a great way to just go further and further with your radio. You can either build a little GMRS repeater like I'll picture here, or you can connect to existing ones that have a lot of power. Some of them are 50 watts. And these work really good because they're usually in a good place like we just talked about. They're up high and they're using a lot of power. So if you can connect into one of these repeaters, you can quadruple or even 10x your range with just connecting to a repeater. All right, this is the last thing. It's kind of just a bonus. This is my favorite tool for range testing GMRS radios. This is the BTEC GMRS Pro. This has an audio relay mode that you could put on and you could drive around town or go to the places you think you want to connect to and hit the radio up and it will record what you're saying and repeat it back to you if you're in range. The audio relay mode is super great because we all know how excited our wives and friends are to do radio testing with us. This eliminates you needing another person to do your testing because if, as long as you're in range, you can hit that repeater. You could do all kinds of antenna testing and range testing with this setup. And what's really cool about this also is you, if you want to do like base station setups, you can hook this to a 25 watt amp. I have a video that I'll put here. You can hook an amp to it and do more base station like testing with it. So you can go the whole way up to, I think it's 25 or 30 watts, which is a pretty good amount of power when it comes to GMRS. And this can be done really easily. This is another thing that I just want to show. This is a lot of the range testing I do is I hook this up to just a basic antenna setup. You don't need to set up thousands of dollars worth of antenna masts and, and the things that hook to your house. Setting up a simple 10 foot pole with a ground plane antenna on top of it and I'll just stick it in an umbrella stand or something. And this is probably the most used antenna setup that I have because I can put it anywhere and just do my tests and it'll just relay anything back right to you. You can even, as it kicks back to you, you can see how much signal you're getting back on your radio from it. Hope you all enjoyed the video. I have a lot more to come. Thanks for watching.